Hello everyone, welcome back. So I'm making a steam engine. Um, they call it a wobbler engine, a wobble engine, or an oscillating engine. Um, it's a single acting engine. Um, I was perusing YouTube for something and it came up in my feed and I was very, very interested in it. Um, see if I could do it with the stuff I had. To, but I'll tell you, I am jonesy in to get a lathe. I, I really wish I had a lathe, but I'm trying to make do from what I got. So I wasn't going to film it till I was done. But I decided I'm pretty far along, and um, I'll put a link into the description. It was actually two guys that I watched build them. Um, but I figured I'd take you along for the uh, kind of, you know, the part three or four that I would have done if I would have did it from the beginning. But I'll explain to you where I'm at right now. So I have the piston made. The piston is, I uh, forget what diameter this is, but I think one guy used a half inch, another one used a 3.8. This is uh, 1360 forts, I think, and I'll tell you how I got to that. My old brass rods. So if you remember when I did my lighter build, I was using these brass rods. Um, so again, with not having some of the tools that I wish I had um, to get a perfectly centered piston um, I soldered these up this looks like one solid piece but it's actually a whole bunch of different rods I think there's six or seven of them and each one fits inside the other until I got perfect size soldered it all together this is a 1 8 inch um, piece of uh, rod and then this is made from a quarter inch square stock just center drilled and then drilled there so this becomes the piston um, you can make this out of brass I wish I had a piece of square brass I would have made that out of brass but uh, and then here's the cylinder that was a tough hole to drill I got some uh, sharpie on there that was tough to drill but this is three quarter inch um, aluminum stock. I had to buy this. It cost me like 550 for a 12 inch piece. So it was pretty cheap. Um, and then this I made out of the eighth inch rod. It's threaded on this side and threaded on this side. Um, and this, this is just a mock-up of this. So basically this goes through here and you have a spring and then I just bought this little knurled nut. And that's what holds the cylinder on and lets it do its little wobble action and then this is a piece of aluminum I actually had this uh, but you could buy it too like I said very inexpensive I have my layout lines to draw up uh, to drill and um, basically the cylinder is going to go there your crank's going to go down here, and then the piston goes up and down like that. And you'll see it better when I put it together and, um, you know, if you follow that guy's uh, tutorial. So now I made this. He used um, fender washers pretty much for everything. Um, I decided to take a little extra step and build this whole thing out of brass. Because if I do end up doing it with steam, um, the steam gets all over. And, uh, and I'll tell you why I didn't like that. But So basically, this is all just nuts that I rounded off like I, I showed in some of my other videos. Um, so we have the, basically this is the crankshaft. And the piston is going to work on here. And as you see, it makes the piston go up and down. And this is a piece of uh, 3 16 brass rod that I threaded to 1032. Um, this is a washer that I made that fits on there. This fits in here. Then I have another spacer that I made that can only go on up to that. The threads stop right there. So it gives me... When I get this on as tight as it could go, 
This turns nice, but it doesn't bind. So I got a little tiny bit of wiggle, which I'll adjust to exactly where I want it to make sure we get a nice spin. And the crankshaft, the piston goes on there. So that's how that works. Then you need a flywheel. So the flywheel is basically like sort of like stored energy, a battery kind of thing. And the flywheel is going to get attached on this side. And what he did was he took some washers and um, he stuck them together with a nut and bolt. I couldn't find any washers. Th th these I happen to have. Um, this is way too big. This is over two inches. It's like two and a quarter inches. It's too big. Um, I had to make a bushing, which I did the same way out of these tubes so I could get it to the right size to fit on there. But again, this one's too big, so I'm not using this. Uh, but as you can see, this discoloration in the rust. So um, what I ended up doing was getting the size he used, which was inch and a half. Um, I had to make a bushing for this one too, but I have it on this uh, screw here because what I did was I put a clear coat on it because it kept getting rusty and I was tired of it. So I put a clear coat on it. So this is going to be my flywheel. So this is going to go end up being on here like this. So put that aside, still kind of drying. And then the, the last thing was, oh, I drilled two holes and I tapped them for uh, 1032 screw. Just gonna use these brass screws. And um, what he did on his base was he just cut it out and then stuck it in there like this way. I didn't, didn't like that look. So what I did was I made this base. Um, I decided I wanted to go with black. It's actually a piece of mahogany. And then what I did on the bottom was, as you can see these four pieces of lead it makes it very heavy and how I made them was I used a fastener bit and I drilled two holes in this scrap piece and just poured lead in it you can use wood for lead you know eventually it's gonna burn up but as you can see it was good enough I can make probably 10 more out of here so I epoxy them in and then this is eventually gonna get covered with felt and then the screw goes in the bottom and this it's gonna go right here like this okay so the next step is I'm gonna drill these two holes so I'll be back when I get that done all right so I have the holes drilled and I gave this a little bit of a sanding to get the burrs off just got everything a little boxy to keep it together so now we're going to um, assemble this and see if uh, she works as far as turning and then we have two more holes to drill, which I'll explain in a minute. Once everything is working, I'm going to uh, JB weld this in. Okay, that turns nice. I don't have the piston. Stand by one sec. All right, I meant the cylinder. So I have the cylinder here. Here's the piston. Get our spring. go so that's the wobble action there okay so the next thing we have to do is we have to um, drill the air inlets 
and then there's going to be a little piece of brass pipe. So how to do that is I have this little transfer punch that I made and this is how we're going to do it. I'll take that out. I'm going to slip that into this hole, that's the air hole. We're going to put this in and we're going to set this at 90 degrees this direction, so 3 o'clock here and we're going to press this down to make a little mark and then we're going to put this over to 9 o'clock and then it'll turn this way and we'll press it down and it'll make a little mark. So you can just barely, hopefully, see that pin coming out. And that'll make the two marks, and then I'll drill them. When I have them drilled, I will be back. All right, so I got the two holes drilled, added uh, the brass piping in the back. Um, I don't know, for some reason they look like the, the holes are too close together, but uh, we'll see what happens. Let's get this together. Okay, now the tricky part. I don't have an air compressor, so uh, all I have is like a duster, but it throws out some serious uh, air. So I'm going to try that out. Let me get that and I'll be back. All right, folks, so I have it on the base. I had to make one change. Um, I had to change the crankshaft. The, um, I mismeasured the distance between this and the center. Um, it needed to be exactly 3 8 so I could get a 3 quarter inch throw on it and it was just a little bigger so I had to change that but so here it is um, it's looking nice runs nice and freely so we're gonna turn on the air I end up getting a compressor and it's single acting so we have to kickstart it that needs a little more pressure there she goes. Little wobbler. Now if I take the air out and I put it on the other port and I flip it the other way, it goes in reverse. Let me crank up the speed. Look at that thing go, man. Even with all that lead on the bottom, it's moving it. That's about, if I had to guess, 15 pounds of pressure. Let's see how slow we can get it. It'll get to a certain point where it'll just stall out. That's pretty slow. Oh. Now, if it was double acting, you could get it to go really slow. Well, but there you go. This is my uh, first wobbler. I'm going to be making some more, I'm doing some more testing, like a horizontal one, and I'm, I'm going to start to shrink them down to see how, how small I can get them. So like always, everyone, thanks for watching. You know, I appreciate your views, and I appreciate comments, and I hope you go check out Mr. Pete. Um, he calls himself Tublicane on, um, on YouTube to, uh, you know, learn how to make one of these little wobblers. They are so much fun to make. I'll tell you, it's getting addicting. So um, thanks again, everyone. You know I appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day, and we'll see you on the next one.